Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a basic flowchart. So I'm on the new screen, and you can see flowchart there, basic flowchart. So I'm clicking on that one, and then it gives me some options, some pre-formatted options that I could select. But I'm going to go for this blank option, and then create. So when you create a blank flowchart, the stencil down the left-hand side, which will appear in a second, gives you all the shapes that you will require to create a flowchart. So you have quick shapes, basic flowchart shapes, and cross-functional flowchart shapes. We'll do that at a different lesson. This one is what we're going to do for this session. So on a basic flowchart, you need a start and an end. So you just basically drag that onto the screen. And then it's a case of building this up to produce your flowchart. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You've got these little arrows coming out of each side and above, which gives you some of the shapes that appear in this stencil. So you can, for example, say if I want a process, I can click on this and it will give me a process. And it also connects it up straight away. Now, if I go and do that again, I've got a decision there. And then I can go process out of there. So very quickly, you can build up a flow, ch flow chart. I could also drag this on manually. It lines up, but it's not connected. You can see there's no connection there. If I delete that off for a second and click on this one, if I click the connector tool, so that is active, and then do that again, drag that on, it does connect it up. Now, if I want to come down here next, I need to click back onto this shape and bring the next process shape on, like so. So if I take this off, put it back to the pointer tool, I'm back to using these shapes. So let's say that I want to go back up. Um, let's have a, so that's another task. So let's go back up to the start. So if this, this process doesn't work, he goes back to the start. So I need a connector to come from there back up to the start so it starts again the whole process so that's like a little circle point tool back on so let's just put some text in here so we'll have start let's start the process and this can be induction induction and then this diamond shape is a decision really so um, i'll call this paperwork Correct. So paperwork correct, yes. Double clicking on this line. Missed. Double click on that line, yes. You carry on down through the process. No. You go this way and check paper work and then you go back around again. So I could have another decision in between there same paperwork correct again and maybe it come in there in fact i will do that i'll just drag that decision on there so i want that to sit in between that and this arrow i want to come back into into in, induction like so so this is now check paperwork and then paperwork correct so i can just double click on this and copy it even though there's a, a typo there i've just noticed paste it into there correct two R's and then I need to create that one paperwork correct so um, this time yes is going to go back to the um, process induction no is going to go back out to the start so I'll go like that so this is no start again it's a no path now I'm coming down here and then I want a an end um, HR induction and then end end process so each of these shapes that I've created there can be um, selected and data can be stored inside them so i've got this on the screen at the moment so i'll close that off normally you wouldn't have that there either on the data tab or the view tab 
you've got options to get these task panes on the screen. So if I go to data, you can, you've got it there, look, shape data window. If I tick that, it comes up. These are preset. So for each of these shapes, there is some information that's already there, like cost, process, name, owner, function, etc. If you right click on a shape, you can go into data, shape data, define shape data, and then that will give you the option to maybe delete some of these. So you say you don't want a process number, you can delete. You don't want owner, you can delete. You don't want function, you can delete. And then you've got end date status. And then maybe you want to add one. So I'll go new and call it and just call this department. Department. And then you can select whether it's text or it's a number or it's one of these options. You've got format options, just normal case for that. And then you can give a prompt which will appear when you want to enter stuff, enter data, something like that. Now the order that this is all in, if I just click OK for this a minute and then go back into that, you can see it's now changed. But let's say I want to put order, uh, department to the top. If I right click again, data, define shape data, what you can do is click on department and then the sort key options there, look. So if I put a one in there and then status, I put a two in there. Those are going to be the top two and then three for cost. And then start date can be four, end date can be five, and so on like that. So if I click OK to that, they now run, run in that order. So you just change the order. Now on these other shapes, that hasn't applied because I've just done it to this shape. So what you really need to do is create your own stencil. So if I just show you that, so if I go to more shapes, and then you've got down here, open stencil, new stencil. So if I create a new stencil, what I could do is drag that shape in that's got all these new fields in it and call it my shape, for example, or something more useful than that. And then when you bring that back in, every time I bring this on now, it will have those, those fields there ready and in the order I want them. I'll just delete that one off. And then you can save this stencil and just call it whatever you want. So it's just going to let me save this with all these other stencils. So I'll call this flowchart shapes. And then I can open and close that in any other template. So if I want to close that, if I can right click on it, close, and then it's disappeared. I'm back to the default ones. Now, You've also got the option on a flowchart to go to a second page. Now, at the moment, this is a very simplistic flowchart, very simple, and it's a completed one. But you've got these off-page reference features, which I can drag onto the screen, and it gives me the option to go into a new page. Or if I did have an existing page, I could have it go into that page there. But I'll just leave it like that so you can see how it works. And then you've just basically got a hyperlink. If I double-click on that, it takes me back either way. If I double-click, it takes me to the other one. So you can jump between pages. So the, this might be just a part of a bigger flow chart and you want it, want it to flow onto a second page or a third page, like so. You can also do the titles for this and the backgrounds for this. So you've got design at the top here. You've got lots of different color schemes. If I click on that, it's changing the color schemes. All of these are quite nice little color schemes. I quite like that one. But on the right hand side, you've got backgrounds with lots of different backgrounds. This puts a background page onto your flow chart. So that's the world and it's attached it there. Look, background page. If I click on page two, it hasn't attached it onto page two. So basically what a background page is, you could, this is the default one. It's part of this. You could create your own page and put your own company logos on that, but then it would have to be attached to every other page. If I go into page setup on page two, so page two hasn't got a background, it has now. So page two is a foreground, click OK, and that'll come through onto this page. So page one has got it already, page two has now got it, and there's a background page. Similarly, if you go on to, back onto page one and you want titles, borders and titles, Let's say I just want this one. It puts the borders and titles on, and that's in the background page two. You then type what you want, 
my flow chart for example the date and times on there come back to page one you've got a bit of an issue with this sitting there so I'm just going to highlight all of these shapes and just move them down a little bit like that so now you can see it's made this a bit more prominent a nice little flow chart now the other things that you can put things into you can put things into containers what's called containers so if I go onto the insert tab you've got containers here nice little containers that you can select so if I now put this into the container just make sure the container is not locked container it's not locked so I'll click that into there I'll bring my decision underneath and then another process underneath that go back and connect these up because the connector tool didn't appear quick enough for my liking so I'll just drag that down to there and that, and that down to there so that's all connected up how I want it click on the container go and lock it so I've locked the container now so when I click away these shapes now move to it and they're in it part of it if I move the shapes inside the container the container this time just grows with the shape movement I'll just put it back up and you can resize the, the, the container if it's gone too big on you so really if you're going to use these containers you put them on the screen first then bring your shapes in link them all up and then lock the container if you don't want it you can just disband the container and it's off the screen and then you can get rid of those shapes as well so that's just a quick look at the container but the main point of this video is how to create a basic flow chart how best to link it up how to put a background on and how to put titles on so hopefully this video has been of use. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you on the next one.